billionaires think of gold and silver the way the unemployed people think about toilet paper. What's going on everybody and welcome back. Another great day here as Bitcoin is up double digit percents and that's of course coming on the heels of what a lot of people thought was going to be uh, a secondary bear market, another sort of disastrous collapse here on the Bitcoin price. I know I did a video a couple days ago with a head analyst over at Bloomberg. His name's Mike McGlone. You definitely want to check out that video if you haven't seen it already, but he talks about everything that's bullish about Bitcoin and gold right now. And to follow up on that segment, we have an amazing interview from Max Kaiser, which we're going to go through right now. And it really, I think, sets the tone for what this entire economy is going through, the essential and important transitions that are happening at a national level, at an international level, and what it means for hard assets like Bitcoin, gold, and property. I think this is one of the most important episodes we've done. This is a significant video clip that we'll be breaking down, and it will help put in perspective everything happening. The world has permanently changed. The Fed is attempting to stop this repricing from going any further. They essentially announced they are nationalizing the markets. And he's looking at a headline from the FT, nationalization of bond markets helps calm nerves. Fed's promise of unlimited buying will not be enough on its own says investors. I mean, this is the um, culmination of what we've been talking about for a number of years here on the Kaiser Report. For those of you just catching up now, this is what we've been warning about and talking about for years. So in other words, no price discovery is allowed, no risk borne by the financier allowed, no risk for the billionaire class, no possibility of losing a penny. As long as the central bank has committed to infinite money printing, infinite, those are their words, infinite money printing. So that means that the stock market, the S&P 500, the bond market is being taken private. Okay, All those stocks and bonds will no longer be publicly traded or publicly listed, or the vast majority of them will no longer be. They'll be then, pri like Dell Computer, remember Michael Dell decided a few years ago, oh, I hate being a public company, too much work and my stock's terrible, I'm just going to go private. Well, okay, apply that now to the majority of the S&P 500. They're just going to go private. So uh, what will be left is uh, a vast penny stock-like junk bond market for idiots and casino operators to lose money in every single day for the benefit of the rentiers. Uh, it, pretty much that's the future. If you notice, the stock market is not going down particularly at this very moment uh, as the flood of the wall of the tsunami of money flows into the pockets of the billionaires. So essentially what they're talking about is what we've been seeing over the past several weeks where essentially the Fed has promised to print infinite amounts of money to salvage the current equities markets. And that's why the stock markets have sort of had these safeguards on the market. They've had circuit breakers, which have stopped the markets from going into freefall several times over the past few weeks. And then after the Fed has promised essentially that they're going to start stepping in to public markets like the equities markets and start buying stocks, they're essentially saying we're writing a blank check to the billionaire class here. We're writing a blank check to the powers that be saying, we're not going to allow you to have that risk. We're not going to allow you to bear the risk of the potential of a downturn in the markets. And that's sort of keeping the ship at least level right now. But long term, that's going to cause a significant drop in confidence in the fiat system, which of course the fiat system is based 100% on confidence. We're going to talk a lot about how that interacts with hard assets here in a second, but you're going to want to see the rest of this interview. The bond market dwarfs the equity markets, the stock markets, so it's way vastly bigger. Ordinary people don't know the size of it and the numbers wouldn't even make sense to them, but the fact that that is being nationalized and presumably that's part also bailing out pension funds, the mutual market funds, like a whole sector of the economy that you're not even looking at, you're just looking at the shortage of toilet paper, the shortage of real goods and services, like that's something that everybody can see. But the, the Wall Street knows that there's a shortage in the bond market, there's a crisis there, and nobody wants to hold it. This is what we've seen way back from September when the repo market was being intervened in by, well, now it's at a trillion dollars a day. Well, let, let's be clear about our, the term nationalized, because it doesn't refer to like a government, let's say France or the United Kingdom, taking over public transport, and for the benefit of public, who will then bring in 
pricing that is in the public interest. This is American style nationalism, where you have the Fed, which is a private bank owned by private bankers, lending out infinite amount of paper money so that the billionaires can be assured of never ever taking a risk or losing any money. That's the American style of nationalism is to go private. That's what they call nationalism. It's different than European nationalism. So again, now we're talking about the difficulties that are happening in the bond market versus the equities market. A lot of people are focused on equities and services. It's what affects them directly. But the bond market is also needing a ton of help. And that bond market is, like this announcer said, orders of magnitude larger than the equities markets. So if you're wondering how deep this crisis is going, it's pretty much hitting many, if not all, of the sectors, the core sectors of our economy. Now it's the best of times and the worst of times in the gold market as well as we've been covering and I have a tweet here from Roy Sabag the situation in the gold market has not improved there is no metal and bullion banks have now stopped offering two-way markets for gold the spot price is disconnected and seems to be discovering the price for something that isn't gold if you have gold to sell contact us right well there's two parts to the financialization of the world and the increase in debt to many hundreds of trillions of dollars around the world many hundreds of times GDP around the world, and that is the suppression of gold. We started doing all this content business back when GATA, the Gold Antitrust Action Committee, in the early 2000s issued a report on gold suppression. This is one of the first things we covered. And this has been the story since that early 2000 period. Gold has, and silver have not been allowed to express their market price. There's been no true price discovery because you can't have a financialization going on rampant with hundreds of trillions of dollars worth of worthless debt and paper money without suppressing the price of gold. Now we're at the point where the fiat money is starting to finally hit the buffers and so gold is allowed to be valued in the true price discovery uh, as the COMEX and the LBMA collapse as they did in the early 60s during the gold pool days. That means you're going to see, I believe, in my opinion, price of gold at, at currently in the um, you know, $1,300, $1,400, $1,500 range, $1,600 range will gap open to $2,500 and head over to $5,000 to, to make up for all that lost time. What we're going to show here in a couple seconds is that gold right now is actually proving to be the reserve asset that everyone considers it. And that in a time like this, the demand for something like gold is absolutely skyrocketing. And that has tremendous implications for Bitcoin. You're seeing a demand for physical. People want physical gold. These these investors, these multi-billionaires want gold, nation states, central banks want gold. And that's what you're seeing, this shortage of the gold supply. The paper markets are unable to deliver physical gold. That's what we're seeing with these exchange for physical contracts being broken. Right now, people cannot get their hands on gold. People who are in the market for gold are unable to buy it. You're already starting to see this in things like orange juice prices. So orange juice prices due to the pandemic, which is caused in part by the proliferation of paper money in the absence of gold price discovery, is now skyrocketing in price due to shortages because it's a physical thing. And people say, oh, I need my health. I want my orange juice. Well, the price is now skyrocketing. Same thing is happening on the commodities. Yeah. And the same thing is happening with gold and silver. Remember, billionaires think of gold and silver the way the unemployed people think about toilet paper. Yeah, you've said this. And you said that we, a few episodes ago, you did warn that what would happen is just as you see people stampeding to the supermarket to buy toilet paper, you still can't, two weeks later, you cannot get any on Amazon. There's a shortage of toilet paper. And you can't find a roll for any price. You said the same thing would happen with gold that once, once you needed it, it wouldn't be there for you. And you see that in this tweet related to the gold market as well from Holger Schweitzbitz. Gold market is facing unprecedented turmoil. Worldwide panic over coronavirus outbreak and flood of stimulus by central banks has ignited demand for one of humanity's oldest methods of storing wealth. It's suddenly much harder to get metal when it's needed. I predict the ultimate, and this is not only the ultimate use case, but the ultimate irony is that once people realize they cannot get gold, they'll start flocking en masse into Bitcoin because that'll be the only way they can protect their wealth with a reliable store of value. 
And that's so funny because everyone in the gold community and the Bitcoin community have been warring back and forth for years. Ultimately, the ultimate use case for Bitcoin is when no gold is available at any price because uh, they're simply, uh, the billionaires have scarfed it all up. So there you have it. You need to put this in perspective. Your paper money is only worth what it gets you. And for a lot of people right now, that paper money is coming significantly secondary to real hard assets, things that you need, right? Like a place to stay, or more importantly right now in a viral pandemic, orange juice. Vitamin C is something that will keep us alive. And therefore that commodity, that asset is starting to skyrocket when it's compared to a paper money that's being printed infinitely. Now that correlation is going to be the same as we start to look at other asset classes. And precisely this moment in time is what Bitcoiners and the cryptocurrency community have warned about in mass for many years. Because the truth is that right now is the time where we're all starting to question what the value of this paper money really is. If they can just print it infinitely, then why do we have to work so hard just to keep a roof over our heads? Why do we have to pay taxes? These are all significant questions that I've heard friends of mine that are not financially inclined or financially literate. They are all asking this basic question. If they have a money printer that has no limit to the amount of money it can print, then why do I have to pay taxes? And that's not a wrong question to ask. It's a very logical question, and it's a question that leads you down the road to hard assets like Bitcoin and gold. Gold is very difficult to get your hands on in big quantities. In fact, most people that own gold only own paper certificates, not the actual underlying metal. And so in a time like this, the actual gold bars are going to get bought up very rapidly. In fact, they're probably already owned and they're not going to change hands for a while. This gold is going to be off the market. And when gold is off the market and silver is off the market, the other most reliable store of value that we have in our society is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin will be available to the masses. And right now in times of unlimited stimulus, we don't know whether this paper money is going to retain its value. In fact, it's quite probable that it will retain less and less of its value over time. And so the higher up on the food chain you are, the more you're looking aggressively to move into assets that will retain their value. So as the gold gets bought up and the silver becomes unavailable, people will have to turn to a reliable store of value that is available, is out on the market and is able to be divisible in a way that it can serve the mass market. It can serve the general population. You can divide a Bitcoin down into such small parts that there is enough to go around for people to keep buying it. So finally, we have the connection to Bitcoin, which of course is going to be the most widely available and trusted reliable store of value as we've seen today with another double digit pump while the stock market is barely moving despite limitless stimulus being promised and also pumped into it. We're seeing that Bitcoin is the mover. If any sort of hyperinflation starts to kick in, all of a sudden that Bitcoin will become so incredibly valuable that it will potentially be hard to get your hands on as well. Not that you won't be able to get a hold of it, but it will become very, very expensive. And that is, of course, what all the Bitcoiners have been looking forward to. That is, of course, why people have been hodling. And that is why I'm confident that the next five, potentially 10 years, are going to be tremendously bullish in terms of US dollar value as we measure the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency industries. In my opinion, there is only one direction it can go, and that is up because paper money is being injected into the economy at an unprecedented rate. And simple mathematics and logic will reveal that the scarcity of the US dollar compared to the scarcity of Bitcoin is only changing in one direction. The best quote from this entire interview is that gold is like toilet paper for the rich. The way we are clinging to toilet paper and these basic commodities that we're worried about our families not having access to during this crisis is the way that the rich are going after precious metals. Furthermore, Bitcoin is a significantly more logical system than gold. This video isn't about how Bitcoin's better than gold, but there is a significant amount of research out, but it's pretty well known and established in the Bitcoin and crypto communities that Bitcoin is more fungible, more easily transferable, more easily divisible. It's a way better store of value if you're just trying to store value in a digital era than gold. Like I said on my last few videos, I'm tremendously bullish on Bitcoin right now. And a lot of people were in the comments saying, 
oh no, Bitcoin's gonna collapse, lower, we're gonna go lower, it's gonna be the thing that everybody sells because they want their fiat currency. And I personally think that if that does happen, if Bitcoin does go lower, if we do revisit the lows from 2018 or potentially lower, I personally feel that those will be some of the best buying opportunities that we will have of any asset class that will potentially ever exist. I will be a buyer. Just like I was a buyer on the last dip, I will be a buyer on the next dip if there is one. And I'm going to continually dollar cost average my way into Bitcoin because that is the asset I trust most. So to summarize this video really simply, gold is now like toilet paper for the rich. You cannot buy it at any price anywhere. And that scarcity is going to drive people into Bitcoin like never before. And as Bitcoin starts to skyrocket in price, we will see another wave of retail adoption. This time, not because they're so excited about Bitcoin and the technology, but because most people will be scared to be losing their wealth. And that's what will drive people into Bitcoin, because Bitcoin will be the only asset class, along with precious metals, that is going up. Before I end this episode, I just want to shout out this event. It's a virtual conference sort of trying to replace, obviously, the void felt in the cryptocurrency community by the lack of, you know, in-person events. These events are kind of mainstays across the crypto industry. And so this lockdown, blockdown 2020, you know, it's, it's essentially trying to deliver that feeling of interacting with the cryptocurrency community here in a virtual environment. They've done some cool stuff. They're trying to have like sort of a VR experience where you can go and sit down with people and network in. VR. It's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I have a promo code that I'll put in the description of this video. If you guys want to attend the conference, you'll get a slight discount. I'm a big fan of anything that's trying to keep uh, the industry moving forward, especially in times of, you know, like we're in uncertainty and we don't know exactly when we'll return to normalcy. So I think that this is absolutely so cool that they're trying to bring, you know, the, the feeling of a connected crypto community, even while we're on quarantine, even while we're on lockdown. So check it out, Blockdown 2020. Let me know what you guys think. And of course, there's a discount code in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like or a comment if you did. If you're not already subscribed to FUD TV, I encourage you hit that sub button. We're going to be bringing you important information and updates throughout this financial crisis, throughout this pandemic. We're going to be here sharing as much information with you as possible. As usual, my name's Elio Trades. You're watching FUD TV, and I'll see you very soon on the next episode.